Parallel compression on drums can make you smile when you do it right, or cry when you do it wrong. So let's turn that frown upside down and get you the punchiest drums in town. Too much? Parallel compression is a way of using two different signal paths that are going to the same destination, but are processed in a different way. So you can have one drum that is dry or uncompressed or less compressed, and another one that's more compressed. So you can do some really fun things with your compressor that you couldn't get otherwise, but it doesn't destroy the natural feeling of the drums at the same time. And although it's an advanced mixing concept, it's pretty easy to get yourself out of a pinch if you've got a new volunteer at church and they don't know what they're doing. You just pull down the fader that's the parallel fader. Hey, if you're new here and you're passionate about making church sound great so that people can focus on Jesus, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Before we get too deep into this, let's talk about what parallel compression really is. When we process a signal with two different compressors, we can arrange them so that they're in series. One compressor feeds into another compressor. That's called serial compression. In contrast to that, if we have two different signal paths where one is compressed with one compressor and another is compressed with a different compressor, but the output of those are both arriving at the stereo bus, that's called parallel compression, or they're taking parallel paths from the input to the output. So if you're with me so far, let me know by typing parallel down in the comments below. We can set up parallel compression on our drums with two basic methods. We can duplicate the input channels so that the same input or the same microphone shows up on two different channels on our board, and then we route it normally to our stereo bus or drum bus or wherever its destination is. The other way is to use groups so we can combine multiple channels going to a group that then is compressed together. Now, when you do this, you have to make sure that the timing relationship between these two paths stays the same. Some consoles will compensate for this automatically, while other ones won't. So let's imagine that you send your drums to the stereo bus. That's normal. But you also send your drums to a group and compress that group and send that group to the stereo bus. If there's any latency caused by that group, before it reaches the stereo bus, you'll get a timing difference, which turns into comb filtering when those two signals are combined again. This can sound weird, and you want to avoid it at all costs. If your console doesn't set up delay compensation in this way, you'll have to send the dry drums to a group and the wet drums to a group, and maybe even have the same compressor on both, even if one compressor isn't doing anything. This way you'll preserve the timing relationship between the compressed and the uncompressed drums. So let's say that you duplicate your kick or your snare, or you have a parallel bus for your kick and your snare to go to in addition to your normal drum bus. What do you do with it now? There's a lot of different things you can do, but most of them hinge around the way that you set up your attack and release times. Because we're dealing with transients on drums, a very fast attack will grab that initial transient and squash it down. Then you could be left with only the sustain of the drum. So if you have a very fast attack and a very fast release, you can get only sustain and blend that in with the rest of your drum sounds. That can add some texture that can be really nice. On the flip side, you can have a very slow attack time and even a moderate to slow release time. What this does is adds punch, and you don't have to worry about the release time coming up in time because you've still got the natural unprocessed drums going to the stereo bus as well. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is that I've got duplicated input channels. So I've got kick and kick duplicate. I know you probably can't see it. I've got snare top and snare bottom, but I've got the snare top duplicated as well. So this is what we're gonna look at for our first group. I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm gonna do with the kick drum first. So let me play the drums as they stand and you can hear what they're like. And then we're gonna to try to take it up just another notch with our parallel compression and some of the things we can do with it. All right, so now let's take a focus on the kick drum. I'm gonna mute the rest of the drums for now so we can just listen to the kick drum. So you can see I've got no compression on my kick, but I mean, it's a fine sound. I mean, my EQ is doing its job. I cut a bunch of mid-range. Don't have to boost too much. 
There's plenty of snap already, but I'm gonna see what else I can get out of it. See if I can get a little more sustain. So I'm gonna come here to my kick duplicated channel. I've got the same EQ. I'm gonna go to my compressor and get it started. I've got a slow attack and a pretty fast release. I'm just add that in and see what it's like as I roll down that threshold. I'm gonna mute it. All right, so we've got a little bit more punch there. Let's listen to it by itself. Now that's pretty squishy. But with the other kick drum, it sounds normal. So we can kind of get the best of both worlds. Now if I want to take the attack time and speed that up, let's go to like one or two milliseconds. And let's see what that's like and see what different sound I get out of it then. So, dry kick drum. That's a whole lot of compression. Let's back off the threshold a little bit. So I got a little bit more length out of the sustain of the kick drum. So it's subtle, these things are baby steps, but you can see how just changing the attack time and the amount of compression you have can change it drastically. Now let me A, B this, if I can do that, and go back to about 20 milliseconds and lower that threshold. We'll see if I can just A, B it for you. So those are two different things you can do with the kick drum. Now let's listen to the snare drum by itself. It's not bad. No compression on the snare top. Got a little bit of compression on the snare bottom. But let's see what we can do when we add in a duplicated snare track that's got a really fast attack, pretty fast release. Let's see what happens when we roll that in. So we can hear that it's got a little bit more attack to it, a little more hardness is what it feels like. Let's listen to just the compressed snare drum by itself. And you might notice that it's not gonna sound all that great. Pretty thin, right? So we might not wanna do that just to the snare and leave it alone. But when we blend that in with the other two snare drum mics, it feels punchy and kind of snapping in your face without losing the essence of it. Let me mix it in one more time. That's nice and sparkly, I like that. And again, great audio is a series of baby steps. Hopefully these will help you get a little bit closer. Now let's listen with both the kick and snare parallel in and out and see if we like it overall with the rest of the drums in. I think it's a little better, so we're on the right track. The other thing about processing in parallel is that one can sound really trashy and things will still be okay. So go ahead and crank down on that threshold and get the compressor really, really pumping. 
Don't worry about if it sounds bad by itself, but blend it in to your unprocessed drums and see if it makes it better or worse. If it's not doing what you want it to do, start over and try again. So let's say that you set up a parallel drum bus. What do you send that bus? You could send all the drums, but you might be adding more noise by sending the tom mics that are pretty noisy in the first place. You could just send kick, snare, and overheads. Or just kick and snare. Or just kick or just snare. It doesn't really matter to me. Just know that there's options and different things you can try to get it to feel and move a certain way. Now you can also have a lot of fun with different types of compressors to give you a certain flavor or distortion from your compression settings. I made a couple videos about different compression plugin types. You can check that out up here. Now let's take a look at what it's like with all of our drums together. Right now I've got them all going through this dry drum group before it's going to my stereo bus. I'm also going to have them all sent to the drums crush bus. So that's just what I'm calling it. It's on mix three and four. So if I go over here to mix three and four, you can see that these are set up as a subgroup. So these faders are gonna match whatever's sent to over here or is gonna be what's on our main mix as well. I'm on the user layer, so I've got inputs right here and my outputs right here because that's the way that I set it up. If I was on my normal inputs layer, you would see all the rest of the stuff here. And I would have to go over here to the mix master section to do that. But for this, I'm keeping it all over here for you. So we're gonna go back to our user layer and I'm gonna look, take a look at this compressor. Now I've got a different compressor on here. Let's try it. These are dry, so I've got the compressor bypassed, but I've got them the Brit comp on here for the all drums. So all my drums post fader are going to this group. Let's see what it sounds like mixed in. So with this, I've got a pretty fast attack time and a really fast release time. I could even slow this release time down. If I just want a little bit of feeling, we can see what those different release times feel like. Mixed in will adjust with levels between the dry and the wet signal. Now that's really crushed, right? I probably wouldn't just do that to a drum bus by itself, but let's listen to it with both of them. I'll start with both or just the dry one up and then mix in the crushed one. Now let's roll back this attack time a little bit, see if we can get them a little punchier, different feeling out of the compression. So dry drums. So I've definitely changed the character of the drums with that second bus with all the drums going to it, just the same as the dry drums. So same mix that's going here is here. These are just compressed a little bit differently. Now let's try it with just kick, snare, and overheads. So if we listen to this one, and I mute this one, You can still hear the toms, but it's just the toms that are coming through the overheads. So let's try this one and crush it a little bit more. On here, I've got the Brit comp right now. Let me switch to a different compressor just so you can get that idea of what it feels like. And we'll give this a shot.
That feels pretty cool. Now let's mix it in with the dry drums. definitely adds a different flavor. So there might be a little less noise than what we did with the all drums together. So I know they're different compressors with different settings, but let's A, B, and see which one sounds different with the toms in, without the toms. So we definitely got a little bit more oomph out of the toms when the toms were also sent to the crush bus, but it was a little bit cleaner with a little bit less noise when I left them out. So that's another variable you can experiment with. Now another thing you can do if you've just got a mono channel is just send the kick and the snare to a bus. So that's here on seven, kick is assigned to seven, and snare at their output levels. Toms are not, overheads are not. So let's check these out and see what that sounds like with just the kick and snare going to a group. We can use the standard compressor still, and I don't know, let's choose something fast and see what that's like. So we'll select this for one, and we'll do a slower attack time for the other one. Now let's listen to it with the dry drums. So you can still have a lot of fun, even if you've just got one extra bus that you can send your kick and snare to. And even if it's mono, you're gonna be in okay shape. Now, when you're choosing the level for your dry versus processed sound, you really just have to go for a feeling. But again, remember that nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. So even if you can get your kick drum feeling giant, that might not be what's helping people sing. And the whole idea is to help people sing. If you want help clarifying what it is that helps your church sing, I made a guide for you called How to Lead Your Church Sound Team. You can find it through the link in the description below. Now, if you've got a spare group or two on your console or some open channels and you're gonna try this, go ahead and let me know by mashing that thumbs up. Now, we already talked about the problem of latency and comb filtering, but there's a couple other things we have to watch out for. Now, with parallel compression, you can use a lot of gain reduction, but you're also gonna be boosting the signal back up and that can raise the noise floor. So you have to look out for the clutter feeling when you're pushing up that parallel signal. If you've gone too far, just raise the threshold a little bit and see if you can get the same kind of feeling without so much noise. The other tracks were so clean that I had to find something else in order to show you when it pushes up noise. So here's a different one and you can see that it's really crushing and that it's bringing up the sustain of the drums and the sustain of the cymbals in a way that you might not love. So here we go.
So that's too much and that's what you gotta watch out for. Now, one thing that you'll see a lot of studio engineers do is use pumping to kind of make the drums move in a certain way rhythmically with the beat. And this is done by getting the release time set just right. That can be really cool, but it's hard to get that dialed in when you've got multiple songs with multiple tempos and feels. So you can chase that and you can make a new scene for each song if you want, but just be aware that you might not get the best results from that when you're trying to mix multiple songs in one setting. So that's how you get started with parallel compression on the drums. And let me tell you, it's addicting. So please compress responsibly. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, mash that subscribe button and ding the little bell and share this with a friend. Hey, be sure to check out this video down here and this video down here. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.